Good morning and welcome to chapel. So glad that you're with us today. We have no regular announcements today, but I was thinking about a couple of things. One is that the Student Association elections are going on and we will be announcing the results of that tomorrow. And then also I was thinking about how earlier in the spring we had announced that we were going from two chapels to one this fall. And I was thinking about how perfectly timed that ends up being in ways we had no way of knowing this fall when we get together that we all get to be together at one time for morning chapel. We look forward to that. Today as we continue looking at the final week of the life of Jesus as he is on his way to the cross, I was thinking about Luke chapter 9 and verse 51 where relatively early in the gospel of Luke, Luke had recorded, when the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. Some translations say he resolutely set his face to go to Jerusalem. For Jesus, he knew that going to Jerusalem at the end of his ministry was going to be going to die, going to be crucified. In the Gospel of John in chapter 10, Jesus speaks of himself as being the good shepherd, and he says the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And Jesus makes emphatically clear in that chapter. He repeatedly says, no one takes my life from me. Instead, Jesus was going to Jerusalem to lay down his life of his own accord. We talked about how that on Sunday, Jesus comes into the city in the triumphal entry. How on Monday, he went to the temple and cleansed the temple. We talked yesterday about how Tuesday was a major day of teaching and of, of confrontation with the spiritual leaders there in Jerusalem. We come to Wednesday now, and Wednesday was largely a day of calm, a day of rest, a day of preparation. We pick up in Mark chapter 14 and verse 3, and while he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was this ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her. And Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing for me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, Wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priest in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad, and they promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. Things are going to start happening very quickly now. But Wednesday was largely a day of calm. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for the blessing of another day. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to live in the light of the cross, to live in the light of your love. And Father, we pray that you would open our eyes today, how that even in these strange times you place before us opportunities to serve in your name. We pray, Father, that you would deliver us from the scourge of COVID-19. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to learn the lessons during this season of life that we really need to learn. Father, bless us. Knit us together as a community, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you have a wonderful day. So glad that you joined us for chapel. You are dismissed.